And I'm back. I know. It's been a while. So, uh, anyway, this is uh, VG Revolution, and uh, my name is John, as always, and this is episode 10, I believe. Yes, episode 10 of Let's Play Software Inc., my current obsession, and I'm doing this a little differently, uh, and I'll explain why, but usually I don't like... uh, doing these voiceovers afterwards while the gameplay is already done. I usually do it all at once, live. It just, it's comfortable to me. I can kind of talk and point things out as, you know, as they have been. Now it's like I'm watching the video and I got to rem- <laughs> remember what I was thinking at the time. And uh, plus it's going like, you know, a million miles an hour right now because this was like a two and a half, two hour and 45 minute gameplay session that I got totally sucked into and uh, I figured that would be a very long YouTube video so I didn't want to subject you to that but anyway uh, what has happened since episode 9 so when this game first came well not first came out but when I first got the game and started doing these let's plays I uh, I was on a really good roll that game and what I did is over like 3 days or so I as I played I would record episodes and I would do, I got all nine of them done in like three days and record it. Whatever. I was cutting them up, editing them, posting them and blah, 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 blah. So that all went well. Then, uh, an update came out for the game and I installed that and also reviewing. And while I did those initial videos, I wasn't happy with the voiceover quality and some some stuff. It just the video capture was not working with my editing software, and I wasn't happy. So I needed to find another solution. So I was testing out some game capture software, and to test it out, instead of screwing up the Let's Play where I was in the game, I decided, oh, let me just start a new game, and I'll test with it. Only problem is, as I found out, is, or it dawned on me, is um, I never saved the Let's Play. I just let the autosave do it. And what that basically does is it calls the the game autosave. Makes sense. Well, when I started that new one, I clicked over the time frame that the autosave kicked in, and it autosaved over the Let's Play. So, yeah. Um, And then, actually, you know what? I take that back. The version didn't update. Then there was another version came out. So, I'm like, all right. Might as well just do that. And I'm like, you know what? Let me also add in some mods and and really have some fun. So, uh, and just start the Let's Play again. So, that's why episode two. uh, Brand brand new game. And as you can see, or I've been watching, um, I've been building it. And with the last update, they did. Uh, there was a lot of balancing going on. So a lot of the uh, methods that I actually used in the original Let's Play weren't working. So that was another issue that I had. Is I was playing and playing, and then all of a sudden I'd go bankrupt. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm literally doing the same exact stuff, and you know things are transpiring in the same exact fashion. This just doesn't make any sense to me. So um, you know, I started tweaking and trying different ways of playing and it the balancing makes it now where you need to be a little bit more conservative so in the original nine episodes i basically came out made a crap ton of money right out right out of the box my first release and then i did this incredibly crazy expansion and and everything was well yeah, that doesn't seem to work as well anymore. And I think it has to do with the way that the bills are and the expenses that, that you now have. Um, on top of the fact that the way uh, competition is within the market and the way that sales and refunds uh, now work, uh, you're not making this exorbitant amount of money. So like the same level, same or similar level and similar quality first release of a 2d editor that i had in the original playthrough made like it was like 20 million dollars or something ridiculous like that with this i think i barely scratched by as we can see here like just over 8 million so there's definitely been a drastic change and i've had to play a lot more conservatively now so 
yes, I am doing this expansion here, but it, A, it makes sense because I need more space for artists and designers and, um, and my programmers now. So I, I had to expand. I had to make a new space. I just, you know, that, that little building wasn't going to work. So what I did is I did this, but I already planned out what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm going to mirror this onto the other side of the building as well. So it's going to be double the size and then build up. The other thing is, is I didn't fill out my uh, teams fully. So I've been kind of progressively adding and hiring more people as, the, as I see fit with the projects. Now, the one thing that I've started to notice is, and, and a lot of people on Reddit and stuff like that have, have discussed it, is when you are actually doing these projects, and, and we're going to slow things down uh, momentarily also, by the way, so don't worry, because I want to talk about stocks, because that, that has been a game changer for this playthrough, so I figure I need to spend a little time on that, but... If you when you start a project, it tells you a recommended number of programmers and artists and designers that you need for a project, and it's usually low. It's usually like I think like this one. Like I'm doing this uh, 3D editor now, and it was like it's it's really just a handful of of programmers. I don't even think I need artists for this, uh, and, and like two designers and stuff like that. So those are those seem to be those are apparently the optimal numbers. But the one thing that I'm still finding out is with those numbers, it is taking forever to actually get the product finished to a really good level. So I still have been bulking up the teams way over the amount of, of people that I need. And and the one thing I've been doing, and this is kind of a way that I've been doing it, is uh, when I do an outsource review, I see what's lacking. And um, so as you can see. We'll go over the stocks in a second. Like I said, hopefully I think I pop it up again. But I was kind of getting, uh, playing around with some stuff here um, for my next project, actually. And um, uh, what was I saying here? Oh, my God. This is why I record these things while I do it because otherwise I go blank. Oh, the teams. So when I do the outsource review, depending on what is lacking. So if they are saying that like 2D... Uh, you know, programming is not good, then I'll go and hire some really top level 2D programmers and then it bumps it up. So like, oh, actually we can see like the screen here, like the OS, it's saying that I need three designers, five programmers and one artist. But it's like, I should actually see how long this takes. When did we start this project? So November, 1995, I should probably write that down because this, this mobile OS is still actually, um, it's not released yet. If I remember correctly, by the end of this. Now, the reason I was doing the mobile release is, if you look in the stock screen, the company that I'm making, I think it was like thirty million dollars. My stock is worth. They released the mobile OS, and it just blew up. That was our first thing that they did, and uh, so I'm kind of following uh, following suit here and seeing if I can also uh, cash in a bit. So, how much money do I got? I got about six million right now in the bank. So I know I'm going to gonna pull up and uh, look at the stocks again in a moment. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the team, so, yeah, so the teams, it, it just feels like it takes forever to actually um, to do anything really with those recommended numbers. So it might not be as efficient, but for some reason, I mean, I feel like it is uh, finishing the projects much much faster um, with full teams. And, and eventually, this is all going to be automated to some extent. Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, project management aspects of it, and I'll probably pick up with that possibly in the next episode or two uh, once I kind of build out the rooms. Uh, this is the kind of... I, I like this layout that I got here. So I have like the pro the lead office right there um, on, the, on the bottom left next to that is a small room for designers. And then I have a small room for artists. Those two, you know, obviously we don't need that many people. There's never that much of a recommendation for them. Uh, and even let's see, November, let's see, November, December, January. So it's going to take probably about three months or so to actually design it. So that's not too bad. Um, so and then the programmers, those, those are going to be the space that you're going to need the most. Uh, in the interim of this, I started sending some people out for uh, training just because, again, I'm going to have another probably month or two 
uh, until they're actually going to start working. So instead of them sitting there just twiddling their thumbs, I figured train them in some of their weakness, and this way we can pump it up for the future. Uh, one thing, again, so, so stocks. Stocks are something that you should probably start fairly early. I think I waited till I had about $150,000 in the bank, and then what I did is I went in, looked at whatever the newest company is, and, it, and it's a gamble. Um, the stock system needs a little tweaking, and I'll discuss that in a second, but basically you look at whatever's the brand new, this brand new company, nothing released, they always start uh, this. The shares are fifty thousand dollars. So once I had about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, I purchased whatever the newest one was, and I just crossed my fingers. I think they actually failed, so that kind of sucked. But at times, you might also, if you do this, is you could possibly get their IPs or patents and stuff like that, and then you could sell that off as well down the future. So just because they failed, you know, it's not the end of the world. More than likely, early on, you'll lose money because you're not going to be the majority shareholder in the company, so you're not going to actually get that stuff. But um, but if they do hit big, and that's what happened actually with um, with the company that had the mobile thing, is I bought them fifty thousand. I bought actually I put in a hundred thousand into them, and um, they released the mobile OS, the phone OS, and it blew up. And they're a good fallback. Now, the thing is, when this happens, and especially early on, you'll see, like, you might have, like, a 300% increase. So, it's, like, 150000 Was that $150,000 or so? 200000 maybe more. Uh, so, you might want to keep an eye on it because it could also fall down. And you might want to actually sell the stock to kind of inject cash into your bank. But, like, in this instance, with them being worth so much... I'm getting insane dividends every few months on that. So it's like I was actually playing. And I didn't realize uh, one of the companies that I had stock in were, was doing really well. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm in the red because I'm just developing. I have enough money in the bank where I don't need to do contracts anymore. And I could just I could just run off my reserves. And all of a sudden, I see it go green. I'm like, what the hell was that? And I went and looked. And as we can see here, it's like some of those months, $107,000 in dividends. So if a company hits big, you know, also don't just jump and cash out on it either. And that's why I kind of, I've been keeping an eye on this to, you know, I want, I want to try to get out of that 35 with $35 million at some point. I mean, that's a great, again, hundred thousand dollar investment is turning over to, you know, 30 some odd million dollars. So that could be really cool down the road, but uh, definitely take a look at the stock markets. Don't be afraid of it. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm outsourcing again and looking like what sucks with this. And again, it's really early on, so I'm not going to alter course too much here. But uh, I'll keep playing, and I, I'm rolling in uh, money right now pretty well. Um, the way I played it this go-around is I did a 2D editor. That did pretty well. And then I did an antivirus and there wasn't any great ones on the market, so I made sure to get it up. I think it was like an 8.0 or something like that, just over 8 as far as the outsource review goes. And I released that, and that made me a ton of money. And now um, this right now, up to this $41 million, it's I think it's basically been stock, and this 3D editor has been doing really good. So as you can see, I think it says, and I'm looking here on a really small screen, like $9 million right there on the 3D editor. So that's... That did really good, and again, I, I looked when you when you're releasing these things, especially when you're like, oh man, I really think that's time to get this to market. Go and check out uh, the recent releases for them, and and see. Some people are in the idea of don't release a similar thing right away or with too close to another release. I've kind of been looking at it is what was released and what was the quality of it. So. If I, if I, uh, I think this three, I think the, the antivirus, yeah. When I started working on that, um, and I was getting towards the end of it, I'm like, oh, I can pretty much probably release it soon. Um, but there was another one on the market. The only thing is, is it was like mediocre or good. So I'm like, well, I know if I can get this up to great standing, I'm going to blow it out of the water. And sure enough, I blew it out of the water. So don't be afraid if, Another company has released something. As long as your product is really good, you'll probably sell it. Um, also, I've been underpricing stuff, so it gives you the recommended price for the uh, pro for the product. 
and uh, I do cut it down a little bit. So I think that also helps as well because it kind of, you know, it's cheaper. It's a cheaper product, but and a better product. So it's kind of a win-win. I'm I'm in the mindset of I'd rather sell a really lot of these things at a low amount of money compared to selling like one or two at just a tiny bit of money. All right, so um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for episode ten. This is gonna be a quick. Uh, I had planned on this being a quickie, and I'll, uh, I'm already working on episode eleven, and we'll work on moving the rest of my employees over here. And then I, if you notice, I had an R and D team uh, set up, so I'm gonna kind of put them in the little building, and uh, I want to start working on research and getting some patents and stuff like that because. Uh, you can make some good money in, in royalties. So, uh, so yeah, make sure to come back. Uh, I'll probably have that up by the end of the week, episode 11. And uh, make sure to hit subscribe. Thank you for checking out. If you got an Xbox One, by the way, check out my hands-on with the Xbox Game Pass. That's right there on the channel. And, uh, yeah, I love your comments. I've been learning things and I've been playing better. We'll talk about the limiting rooms and not sitting here signing computers like a crazy person like I was doing. But anyway, until next time, keep on gaming.